Hi, my name is Lauren Rabinowitz and I'm a gastroenterology fellow at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. I'm going to talk about a new article, Gender Dynamics and Education and Practice of Gastroenterology. With an increasing number of women joining procedural fields, including GI, optimizing the work environment for learning, teaching, and clinical practice is essential. To that end, my co-authors and I distributed a web-based survey to 130 gastroenterology fellows and practicing gastroenterologists at 12 academic centers and three large private practices across the United States. And what we found is that fewer women are being trained using tactile or hands-on instruction during endoscopic learning. Of both men and women who were trained using hands-on instruction, however, a majority of them felt it was incredibly important for their education. We also asked about the environment within the endoscopy suite itself and found some interesting differences. While 76% of the female respondents reported that men were being treated more favorably in their endoscopy unit, 71% of men felt that both male and female gastroenterologists were treated equally. In order to address some of the disparities that our study has elicited, my co-authors and I propose some solutions. In order to address disparities related to tactile or hands-on instruction during endoscopic training, we recommend formalizing curricula for academic faculty on gender dynamics during instruction. And we also think it could be helpful for attendings to be trained in the use of detailed verbal instruction, just in case a female or a male trainee doesn't feel comfortable with hands-on instruction during a case. We also thought it was important for trainees to be aware that endoscopic training may be enhanced by hands-on instruction and that they should know that this is an important um, educational tool that may help their learning. Additionally, we continue to advocate for more women in leadership positions. Um, GI divisions have been and should continue to actively recruit female faculty members because this gives more opportunity for female faculty members to be able to do endoscopic teaching of female trainees and vice versa. We also felt that the ergonomics of endoscopic equipment may not always be optimized for female gastroenterologists. And in order to improve that, women should be included in, in the design and trial of endoscopic equipment, and men and women in gastroenterology should have equal involvement in purchasing decisions for that um, equipment within their endoscopy suite. Finally, we advocate for increased awareness of gender dynamics within the endoscopy suite itself. Unconscious bias training and gender sensitivity training may be helpful for both faculty, trainees, and everyone practicing within the endoscopy suite itself. We also thought that educational workshops in order to improve communication within the endoscopy suite itself could be helpful in decreasing any friction that may exist related to a practicing gastroenterologist gender. And finally, we continue to encourage male gastroenterologists to continue to be allies for their female colleagues and trainees. Thank you so much.